What's going on YouTube? My name is Calvin. I go by Calciscope. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down this Jimmy Butler design in Adobe Photoshop. Let's get to it. Alright, so I'm going to be breaking down this sports design in group by group so you guys see I like layered my groups over here and one thing I want to say before I start the, the breakdown of the PSD is that make sure you guys watch the whole video because you guys comment in the comment section like how'd you do this how'd you do that and it's like obviously you haven't watched the whole video so make sure you do that and just do that before you like start to ask questions because it's like kind of repetitive when it's like it's there in the video and you guys don't actually pay attention so that's just a public service announcement but we're gonna get to all the elements so i'm gonna start from the beginning so the background element so i'm just gonna hide all of these these groups besides the first one all right so if we were to leave it blank it would just be the white background now this is the first uh group that i have together it's called my background elements and you see it's everything that makes up the background don't be fooled because actually what i did as i actually masked out all of the subjects that i was going to use so all the jimmy butler uh pictures I was going to use I did that first but we're going to break down all the subjects that I I did for this okay so the first thing that I use for the background that you see it on the left side is this photo of it's just a, it's just a texture photo it's a black texture photo and I'm going to actually share this PSD with you guys I I will share this PSD with you guys so you guys will get some of these photos and be able to see what I really did so this is the first thing that I use for the background. It's just a nice uh, textured, textured black. So it's not just a normal like regular black layer. That's what I've been focusing on. Cause you want to make sure you have texture whenever you're doing designs like this. So you want to have texture on your on your subjects and just the whole thing in general. So that's what we use for the first one. And then this is my text layer that right there, my Jimmy Butler text. And what I did to make this text like stretch, like how you see it stretched out is I typed out Jimmy Butler so I typed out Jimmy Butler and then I left the R off of it right so I left the R off of it because I wanted to add an extension to the E to give it a, sort of a nice cool little design effect so I added three rectangles on the ends of the E so same length rectangles on the ends of the E's and they're connected to that E and then I went ahead and used the same font and added in my are all right and the font that i used on this was franklin gothic heavy um it's a very commonly used font especially for like designs and one i would definitely recommend that you guys use okay and like i said i will share this psd with you guys so you guys can really see what i did and now this these are the two x's that i had so there's x1 and x2 i mean there's fog there so it's kind of harder to see but without the fog you could see that's the two x's that i used for this design so I thought that was just a cool little thing that I use. And to do the X's, um, just to get the outside, you kind of have to do it in a different way. So the way that you have to do it is you have to put your fill opacity all the way down, right? So that's going to bring your fill opacity all the way down. You'd be like, all right, there's nothing there. But then just add your stroke over the top. So add your stroke over the top, and you can make your stroke whatever size that you'd like to. Um, if you want to, if you want to actually do your stroke manually, that might be a better option. If you're gonna go to a higher, higher uh, resolution, not higher resolution, but a higher um, amount of pixels for the size of it, because it begins to curve. So that might be something that you might want to look into. And if you were gonna just do the outside, you would just do the same thing, but use like the line tool or something to trace around. So the line tool is. Uh, Where's the line tool? It's in the shapes. It's over here. And then you would just pick your, your weight of the lines that you want to create. And that would be how you would get that done. All right. So then this is just my smoke layer. And with my smoke layer, I use my smoke brushes. My smoke brushes are right here. Um, let's go down. I think I, it was smoke brush six that I used. Let's see. Where are they at? Yeah. Free smoke Photoshop brushes six. And these are, you can get them on um, brusheasy.com it's the free Photoshop smoke brushes six very very uh, good and great to use and it's actually on my last video where I broke down another another picture um, slash tutorial and when I did the 
When I did the uh, Lamar Jackson glow design. Yeah, that's what it is. You guys can check that out. All right, and then this is my Jimmy Butler gradient, and this is like it was like a really big part to it that I was really really digging. This is my Jimmy Butler gradient, and I have it still open over here. This is this is it right here. I'm gonna add a black layer underneath, and the way that I did this was, um, if you follow my other gradient map tutorial, you'll know exactly how I did it. But I'm going to say again how to do this and pull this off. So all you have to do to get a look like this is you would have to go from here you have your 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 sharp mask right here then you're going to add a gradient map onto it so make sure you have details really risen up like see how it's really really detailed in the in there it's so that you can bring out your shades or, or lightnesses so I wanted to bring out my lightnesses so I went to the gradient map and I picked a spot like kind of just in between where I just see something fit to my liking right so I can see a good amount of that light on there so once you see a good amount of that light on there you merge them together you're gonna press control and then click on the layer as well then press control C and add a layer above now you can hide the the gradient map underneath go to your channels add a layer and then paste it in there okay and then you would paste it in and it's gonna be called alpha 2 then you go back to your layers you go to select, load the selection in, and it would be on alpha 2, right? And then you would just pick any color that you want to use for your gradient. And it just fills like so, right? So that's really how you do it. Pretty simple way to make a nice effect on an edit that a lot of designers use. And it looks more complicated than it really is, all right? So then, I, then we have just our rectangle here. I added another texture onto this. This was the texture that I used for that that wall right there, whatever you want to call it, that line. I thought that was pretty cool. And then the fire, I used the fire bin image that I have, and I literally just put it on screen. I mean, on normal, see, if it's a black background, it's going to take over. So if you put it on screen, you just get what you need to get on there. All right. And then for the plus dots, these are my plus dots that I have, but the only thing about the plus dots is you, when the one that I have, it's actually a black background. I'm going to try and open it up. Let's see. Um, what is it called? I forget what it's called actually, but it's okay. Cause all you have to do if it's a black background. Oh yeah. The blend options, the blend options It's right here. So if you go on the blend options, see how it's a white background. You're gonna have to use blend if so right click and then go to blending options and then you're gonna have to slide your slider from the white because white's gonna take it away obviously if it's a white background but if you know about blend if it's just that white takes away um, from the highlights black will take away from the shadows so that's how I use utilize that to make this uh, plus dot whatever you want to call it and then the Jimmy Butler I did the same thing as the beginning when I made the stroke but I took the fill opacity down all right and then Jimmy Butler's repeating text um, what you guys are gonna have to do for that is also pretty simple but can get a little bit tricky if you don't use the right the right uh, measurements and everything but just use the polygon ellipse tool and then you're gonna hold down shift make a circle and then take your text tool add a layer above whoops add a layer above and you're gonna go to you're gonna go to this ellipse right here and you're gonna wait till that you're gonna get right on that line so it gives you that like um, inverse curves um, whatever you want to call it inverse curves little icon and then you click on that then set your brush size or your text size and then you can type all around in a circle right that's how you can type all around in a circle very cool and very useful to use when you're on Photoshop making designs because circles are fun and a lot of people use them. Uh, what just happened? Okay, let's get rid of these and move on to the next group. All right, so the next group is the two shapes. And all I did with the two shapes is I made a triangle. I literally made a triangle from here I used the polygon tool and it was three sides, made a triangle, and then I used the anchor tool to make a sh slight shade, I guess. All right, 
So that's how I did those two shapes. Nothing really major. Then this is the Jimmy Butler back. This is him in the back. I added a lot of color balance, a lot of hue and saturation to him, and a little bit of levels. And remember when we're doing hue and saturation, you want to paint. You want to paint on the white of the layer mask, and you want to have your brightest highlights on the outside. And you don't want your brightest highlights just going everywhere in which way. Just make sure you're really taking your time to make them look good and just pop. And then color balance, you're just going to match it with the subject color of the design. All right. And that's what we really did on the mid and the front as well. Then for this Jimmy Butler black and white photo, I uh, just made it to a black and white picture. And then after that, I used Topaz lens effects. And Topaz Labs is something that you guys are going to want to get. I still haven't dropped my tutorial on that. Um, I will I will drop it soon, but there's plenty of videos you can find Topaz for free. I use lens effects on pretty much all of them to get some lens gra grain adjustments, right? So I just wanted to put, make it more grainy. So I use Topaz lens effects and I added grain. All right. And then also for, for the outside, I just added a rectangle with a rectangle tool. And I just turn my fill off, turn your fill off, and then I just made a stroke of just the outside of a of white, right? So just the outside of white. And that's what I did for that square right there. So you can have fun and play around with that. Okay. Now we have just the photo. We already went over that. Then I masked out the backboard from the picture as well. When you mask out a backboard, just make sure you take out the the actual arena because then it won't look realistic if the arena is just sitting there and it takes a little bit of time to mask out the net but it's well worth it once you're done and it also also just makes it look very nice so that's what we did there then for the ball fire I have a bunch of layers I added to this so the first layer that I added was this this little ring light right here right and I put that on screen just like I said because if you have it on normal it's not gonna look right so we added a little bit of blur gallery I use I use path blur use when you use blur start using more of blur gallery stop using these blur gallery gives you more options and more variety and with the blur gallery path blur I just made one speed line up the, to the top and it really just gives it a nice effect versus that right there which doesn't look very enhanced at all right and then I added some color balance to it and I added another another copy of that that flame bin and warped it a little bit to around the ball and then I added my final light on there on a linear dodge linear dodge will add to your to your light so linear dodge will make things glow like see I'm using blue right now which doesn't make sense but just for the the fact of the um, design using that blue linear dodge makes your things uh, glow all right now we're on the final part right so we have our foreground elements uh the first one that i didn't add was not that that wasn't the first one i had but i added this this texture right here and this is just like a wall it's just like a texture i don't know it's kind of funky kind of cool so i used that texture on there and then i used my paper brushes to just get rid of some of it so I have my brushes up here. I have so many brushes. Hold on, I gotta find it. Oh yeah, torn paper brushes right here. I use torn paper and then went on the mask to just take away some of that. So you see, if you paint on black, it's gonna take away. White's gonna add it back, and that's how I did that part. And then I made a duplicate underneath of just black. So I made it all black with the levels, just turned it to black, and then I added a little bit of blur gallery onto the bottom part to uh, make that look like a shadow, if you want to call it that. Then for the heat sticker, this is kind of uh, kind of complicated to just explain normally, but pretty much all that you have to do is text out, write your text out on like two lines, write your text out on two lines, and then after you write them out on two lines, duplicate it, and then just go all the way down, right? And then after you're done with writing out the text, turn it a little bit to make it look more like a sticker, more realistic. And then from there, add hologram, holographic texture. So this is just one example of a holographic texture uh, that you guys can use, right? So if you just look up holographic textures on Google, you'll find plenty of them. 
but just put your holographic textures on a on a lending mode that looks looks good enough for you to use like you don't want to just use any and the holographic textures will be on here for when you guys download this uh psd so do not worry i'll include this onto there that you guys can use all right so then that's our heat sticker then we have our film texture simple film textures this is the original film texture i just twisted it a little bit and then i masked it out and put it on screen mode to give some more uh texture to my photo and then my castle scope logo is up at the top not that you guys really are going to be worried about that and then i added my final color look up my color look up was 47 but it's very very low because i didn't feel like i needed to add much since i did a pretty good job on just making all the colors like pop and everything i believe so that's how we got this psd done of jimmy butler um, let me know if you guys want to know anything else and what else uh, tutorials I should be putting on here. If you if the breakdowns are helpful, I can definitely do more. I'll start doing more breakdowns because I want to start doing more designs because you know I gotta be great in all assets, not just the things that I usually do. So that's a, a reason that I want to start doing more design work. But let me know if you enjoyed this down below and how you think it looks, how it came out. And until next time, man, it's been Castle Scope. Everybody stay scope, man. Peace.